Hello everyone, my name is Umar Yaqub Khan and today we're gonna discuss about SQL injection. Actually, we're gonna know the basics of SQL injection and then we're gonna perform a demo on this. I have already selected two of the websites, uh, one of which is vulnerable to SQL injection and one just handles it properly in a proper manner. So we're gonna see where lies the difference and what uh, what is the advantage or we can say of validation I, I would say is the major prevention of the sql injection however data sanitization is also necessary uh, to overcome this problem in which we just escape the special characters to so that the the query is not modified so basically SQL injection is a code injection technique in which we just modify the SQL query to query our database and get the results we want. So let, let me just show you an example. I have that in my blog. You can also get to my blog here SQL injection. Let me open it for you. Yeah. There so this uh, type of attack is mostly done on the login panels and this is how it works so for example we have a user and he has his, uh, his own password so we when we try to authenticate we just query the database to see whether this username with this password exists or not if the username with that same particular password exists we give him access to the website or, or the application inside right so basically what is happening in the background the query goes to database and checks the database gives the results as true or false this is like the basics of the SQL injection and we'll see what query it uses it uses select star from users where star means everything from users users is the name of the table where login login is the field name is admin and password is equivalent to this see uh, this is the normal query that I am selecting however the password is equal to one would be replaced by the actual password and if the admin has the password one here the, it results as true right so this is the normal query you see that the selected part is so what we have to do in SQL injection we use these special characters you know these special characters have a special meaning in SQL query and we use these and for example I have used R1 equivalent to 1 however I don't care about this part where login is equal to admin and password is 1 whether this is gonna be true or not but let's just focus on this part the second part or one equal to one one equal to one would be always true right so this query will be evaluated to this see here select star from users where login is equal to admin and true simply it just says yeah it's true just give him the access right you can just skip this part as well login is equal to admin you can say uh, where uh, something else a equivalent a or something it depends on you how you use it right so the basic idea is uh, you can just turn it to true wherever you want uh, but there is one uh, necessary condition that these special characters your uh, for example your login logging in and you are typing in the text box that text box should include these things right so I have already uh, selected a site it is one of the famous saloons in Bangalore in Chennai oh, I just attack that one ylgindia.com well this is having the vulnerability and I approached it to them a few times and the, they haven't fixed it yet so let's see if we can get something over here so this is the website of the YLG saloon uh, you can get 500 discount on services or whatever so let's just focus here uh, it's pages dash 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 and I'm gonna go to their admin panel so it's hard to find one admin panel and I have worked on this before so I know the accurate exact URL of this website so I'm gonna just I'm just gonna type something over here and I'm going to type something over here 
okay I don't know its password what I am doing is simply injecting my code in modifying their uh, SQL query and let's see how it goes when I click on login voila I'm in so you can see there that there is an option of change password and log out that means I am logged in I can change the password using the same query I used in old password and I can mm, type in the new password and then I can change password but I'm not doing that because uh, that's offensive well we just see the bookings uh, from this date to this date search so I am uh, logged in here so it does not return me few results so um, I know something about get and post requests it uses get mechanism here and let, let me just make few changes here and let's see what we got oh yeah we got everything here so let's just move to bottom so you can see the names of the the their the girls actually all of them Sarah Rashmi Warsha Monisa uh, and this is their email address this is their phone number and the services that they used and the venue day time etc etc this is all I have so I can just download this list can also download this list it I chose some uploading process and it it's downloaded right so this is it uh, however I'm not going to share this information with anyone because this uh, this lecture is purely educational and it is not intended to do harm I have already written to them in this regard so I hope they, they will take care of this very soon so this is how this works uh, in the websites which are vulnerable to this attack I think the m major prevention of these attacks is validation however client side validation will not work enough but server side validation should be handling this problem also there there should be an easy error mechanism error handling mechanism actually in the websites that will also get rid of this problem well we're gonna uh, I'm gonna show you that how the proper error handling is done and how how we can get rid of these uh, SQL injection attacks so I have chosen my university account here so the guys familiar with Kashmir University this is uh, their something registration number or something but I, I want to show you that this website is secure enough and when we try to do something incorrect in here it will it has a proper error handling mechanism and does not give us the results we want and rather than it shows up a different page right so let let me let me just show you that for example I'm typing in some registration number and I'm trying to search here it says invalid registration number one more thing I want to focus you here is this is a client side validation see uh, for example I am just typing in here search right you see the refresh button over here it is not refreshed it just when I click on here search it just shows something here it does not use Ajax it is a complete client-side validation that means it uses JavaScript on this part so I cannot use these codes so I, if I am using a single quote over here and try to search it will show me invalid registration number right so what I am going to do here is I'm gonna kill the JavaScript function which would be initiated on click of this function right so you guys will be knowing how to do that so let's just right click here inspect and it should be here yeah input type sub submit you see this the highlighted section it is the code for this submit button so there should be something on click uh, it's here you see there on on click JavaScript function uh, whatever it does it actually validates the things here I'm just deleting it since JavaScript works on client side we can easily remove that let's do uh, the same for this text box if it, it has something well everything uh, we do uh, with JavaScript we use the IDs of these uh, inputs so I'm gonna delete this ID from here alright so now one when, when I click on search see I will click on search now 
and it will not show me the uh, registration number is invalid or something see I'm clicking on search invalid registration number it shows now that means uh, this request goes to server the server validates it and then it gives it appropriate results right that means it has both client side uh, validation and server side validation however our server side validation is happening on the server that means we can take our request to the server right so let's just do that again let me sh refresh this page it's taking some time here oh, it's taking a lot of time okay so if I click on search it shows me the validation again let's just kill that validation again and then inject our code let's just click this event as well oh, sorry kill that event actually uh, ID I'm gonna delete it from here so I'm gonna inject my code over here uh, I just injected my code and I'm gonna click on search now I actually give a query to show me the list of databases what are the databases this is user this SQL is using in background so when I search it takes me to the same page yeah you see that default axpx id is equal to 2 but the thing is the contents that I want to see are no more there because this is the proper error handling mechanism they are using so whenever such uh, security violation occur this should be displayed or this should be displayed accordingly right so this displays now security violation SQL for or you can have your own custom messages they prefer you uh, keeping it that way so I want to see that the difference between a good website and the vulnerable website so this website is secure from SQL injection however I have not tested it for other uh, vulnerabilities but for SQL injection it is secure enough so I hope you like the video and there's a lot uh, you can learn on SQL injection also there are some other tools you could use for SQL injection to do on its own the tool is one of the tools I use is Havigy that's one of the good tools and you, you can find some of the tools over internet as well but the logic remains the same you need to know the basics of SQL injection and then you can proceed on higher levels all right so I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. You have a good day. Bye bye.